This is the Barbados Today Morning News for Wednesday, August 16. Thank you for joining us. I am Marie Claire Williams. We begin with news that the former police commissioner, Darwin Dottin, believes the leadership of the Royal Barbados Police Force could have taken action much earlier to stop the proliferation of gangs. Dottin was commenting on the current spate of criminal activity in a wide-ranging interview with Barbados Today. His statement follows last Monday's shooting on Spring Garden Highway, which claimed the life of 20-year-old Tariq Jr. Rock and left several other people injured. A few days later, two more people were injured when a man discharged a firearm at the Fairchild Street bus terminal. It seems really pretty alarming um, to have 16 gangs in a small locale in, 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 the, in, the block, in the Black Rock area. Obviously, that did not develop overnight. And the intelligence should have picked that up. And it should have been fed to the policymakers um, such that there could have been a policy response um, to, to, to that. Dottin says when he led the force, he knew the crime hotspots and the main people behind the guns and drugs. He also revealed that all the trouble-prone communities had been mapped out, making it easier to act appropriately. We know, and I'm speaking about my own experience as, as, as commissioner and, and how we, we handle things, I'm saying that we know the locations, we know the communities um, that are involved. Um, over time, we map these, these communities. Essentially, they are, they are innocent inner city um, communities and so on, but uh, more and more, there are some rural communities that are being, um, well, that are involved in these activities, and these tend to have some association with the um, distribution of, of drugs. <clears throat> and we did that for a reason. Um, because we think that that is the root of the problem, these locations and communities um, that have these particular difficulties. And we also know the people who are involved, the prime movers mm -hmm. behind this activity. And um, it's then quite easy then to follow um, what I call the gophers, the people who act mm -hmm. on behalf of the, the, the prime movers. There have been calls for a tougher approach to curbing rising crime. But Attorney General Adriel Brathwaite is advocating an alternative approach. And he says he does not believe lengthy jail terms will solve the problem. In, in Barbados, we, we have a feeling that once someone commits a crime, he should be incarcerated. So I, I am one who am a proponent of, of second chances. So. But we need to be able to demonstrate to, to our public um, that, in fact, that these initiatives that we're taking to move more of our young people away from crime does not mean that we're being soft on crime. There is, a, there is a time, it is a place for serious punishment, but there are also times when intervention, in, in particular where our youth are involved, where the softer skills are, are, are required. Because to me, and I'm sure to many of you, it makes no sense, or it makes little sense, incarcerating a 19-year-old, for example, at, at, for five years, he goes into the prison system. He goes into the prison system with challenges, either low um, morale, poor education, um, family difficulties, you know, the usual gamut of, of challenges. And he comes back up from prison with the same challenges and goes back into his community with the same challenges. And then we question why he ends back up in the inner prison system. In other news this morning, local garment manufacturers are reporting a drop in sales since the increase in government's controversial national social responsibility levy. The tax is being blamed for an increase in the price of some school uniforms. And addressing last Friday's meeting of the Social Partnership, President of the Small Business Association, Dean Straker, called on government to reconsider the application of the tax in that sector. In an interview with Barbados Today, President of the Barbados Manufacturers Association, Jason Sambrano, said the sector is already feeling the effects. It, it definitely has impacted the cost of production, not only with regards to the inputs with the NSRL and the, the 2% um, foreign currency fee, um, because the majority of manufacturers have to import their items for manufacturing, um, but they've also been negatively impacted by the increase in diesel costs and fuel costs. Um, that, which also is a, a substantial part that goes into the cost of production as well. 
Culture Minister Stephen Lashley is giving assurances that a maintenance program will be in place after Carifesta for the venues which were refurbished for the occasion. Lashley was speaking ahead of Friday's official opening of the Caribbean's Premier Arts and Culture Festival. He says significant work has been undertaken at the Garfield Sobers Gymnasium and Queen's Park ahead of the event. And I would say to you that maintenance is an issue that we have to look at generally in relation to our buildings. Um, I would say to you as well that a maintenance program will be put in place for the Queen's Park buildings. We would have expended uh, quite a bit of money to make sure that that facility can be upgraded and restored. It is an historic structure, falls within the World Heritage property, and a major uh, part of that will be a maintenance program. The other expenditures would have been mainly at our schools. The Common Mayor, I think I listed all of them, um, various um, schools that would have had uh, a foundation, Alexandra, Lester Vaughan. Those facilities fall within under the responsibility of the Ministry of Education. And I'm sure that with the funds that have been spent, particularly in relation to the artistic spaces, that we will work closely with the Ministry of Education to ensure that good care is taken of, of, of those spaces. There's regional and international news after this short break. Yes, girl, you know they've got provision to sell it slow. Mm. And I don't sell national newspapers at all because they don't sell. So I'm washing cars now. I like to get up before 8.30 because I can't take the hot sun. You want the car wash? No, not today. It's clean. But, but you're going in very early though? Yeah, I'm just going early so I can read the bar better sit there online before work starts. Right. But you can still let me uh, clean the vendor for the $2. At least it's still cheaper than the nation newspaper. All right. <laughs> I, I got a special boo here that I got it uh -huh. showing me. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh -huh. Enjoy your day here. Uh -huh. You too. All right. What that paper is? She can't see clearly when the dirt is gone. Barbados Today, news you can trust. In news from the region, three members of Trinidad's Congress of the People have resigned a few days before elections for a new leader of the party. The COP once formed part of the coalition People's Partnership Government. Party leader Dr. Anirudh Mahaber, his deputy and the general secretary tendered their resignations ahead of the August 20 poll. The election has become the center of a legal battle by a few disgruntled members who are opposed to one of the candidates contesting the leadership of the party. Further afield, rescue workers have recovered nearly 400 bodies from a mudslide on the outskirts of Sierra Leone's capital, Freetown. Dozens of houses were buried when a mountainside collapsed on Monday morning. The president urged residents of the affected areas to evacuate immediately to allow rescue workers to continue searching for survivors. Rescue operations continue in the outskirts of the capital Freetown as morgues struggle to cope. Witnesses describe corpses lying on the ground until enough space can be found inside as crowds gather, desperately waiting for news of their loved ones. The president has encouraged residents nearby to evacuate immediately. That's so the military and rescue workers can continue to dig for survivors under the debris. The mountainside collapse on Monday is one of the deadliest natural disasters Africa has seen in recent years. Dozens of houses are covered in mud. The government has said there are a number of illegally built structures in the area. This resident describing how homes and a palm wine bar were all swept away, with people inside. The Red Cross says at least 3,000 people have been left homeless, desperate for shelter, medical help and food. The chief coroner in Freetown told Reuters that at least 500 bodies are expected to be recovered. The next concern is deadly diseases like cholera and typhoid, which could... And that's news this morning. Remember, for more, you can visit our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also find us on Mix 96.9 FM. I am Marie Claire Williams. Have a good morning.